Let's queer up politics. Tim Walz slams Republicans at HRC Gala and stands by LGBTQ rights. Minnesota governor and running mate of presidential candidate Kamala Harris, Tim Waltz, delivers a keynote at the Human Rights Campaign annual gala where he highlighted his dedication to LGBTQ rights and criticized his GOP opponent, Senator J.D. Vance, for calling school shootings a fact of life. Waltz countered, saying, quote, It's a fact of life. Some people are gay. But you know what's not a fact of life? That our children need to be shot dead in schools, end quote. Waltz praised the Vice President Kamala Harris for her support for, of queer rights, calling the Biden-Harris administration the most pro-LGBTQ plus in American history. He commended Harris for officiating some of the first same-sex marriages in California after the 20, after 2015 United States Supreme Court ruling. Walls also underscored the importance of embracing enacting red flag, red flag laws and banning assault weapons. He noted, quote, our kids should be free to go to school without being shot dead in the halls, end quote. In Congress, Walls was an early advocate for same-sex marriage and supported the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. As governor, he signed protections for transgender health care and banned conversion th therapy, reaffirming Minnesota's commitment to LGBTQ rights. Walls emphasized the importance of fighting for human dignity and equality. He said, quote, for God's sake, the bar is pretty damn low here to treat people like human beings, end quote. And so when we got the majority in Minnesota for the first time in over a decade, we had the governor's office, we had the House, and we had the Senate by one vote. And we got busy. First thing we did is we banned conversion therapy in Minnesota. We protected transgender community and said, in Minnesota, you are seen, heard, loved, and respected, and safe, and safe in Minnesota. And we did something a little bit. We banned banning books, especially banning LGBTQ books for themes in that. Think about it in this room. This is what these folks are focusing on, spending all their time. Like reading about two male penguins who love each other is, is somehow going to turn your children gay, and that's what you should worry about. But here's what I'll tell you. It's a fact of life some people are gay. But you know what's not a fact of life? that our children need to be shot dead in schools. That's not a fact of life. <laughs> Folks are banning books, but they're okay with weapons of war being in our schools. Look, that's not this country. It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't happen elsewhere. We're going to make sure our children are seen, they bring their authentic selves, and then we're going to make sure they're safe when they get there. So thank you all. I think that's a brilliant speech. <laughs> and of course, uh, and it is so refreshing to hear a politician speak without, speak, without him speaking politician. Right. Yeah, really exactly. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I mean, his, uh, I actually really like him as a vice presidential candidate, and I think Kamala made a great choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like, uh, you know, Uncle Tim, who you would drink a beer with, you know? Like, he's very, he's very much humanized um, versus, as you said, like, this, like, politician that's very, like, mechanic. Yeah. Um, and, you, know, he's very, you know, he has empathy, he has passion. Um, and you can hear it and when he's talking about issues like HR, like the, at the HRC about gay rights and the mass shootings that happened, you know, he's really passionate about it. And it's not just a canned speech. It's, you know, from passion. And, you know, the good thing, the, not the good thing, but the, the good thing is that, you know, he, he's been there. He's been in a classroom, right? Like he has these like human regular experiences that we all have had being teachers and being coaches and mm -hmm. mentors. And so he really has humanized, um, you know, the VP role. Um, in our political system here. And I know that's been beaten to death, but of course, Tim Waltz is, was the sponsor for, uh, uh, for the Gay Straight Alliance at, uh, at 
the high school that he worked at, and oh, his yeah. wife, right. help, uh, and his wife helped students come out. So, so, and this is not you know this re that recent. I mean, it is now a little bit while ago. So he might you know I like the effort that he actually committed himself to an ally when allyship wasn't you know was not a huge thing that we now right. talk about today. Right. You know, it's tough. I love, of course, I love seeing a human being delivering a speech as opposed to a robot or whatever, you know, but I think that a lot of the caring attributes and, and those human features that we're sort of seeing uh, in all these public appearances will also be held against him you know, tenfold, you know, like from the other side, um, just because I think that, you know, helping students come out at school is looked at not great you know uh in not here at this round table of course you know but in the eyes of the people who we need to change their minds or or filter their way of thinking a certain way if we don't want them to be voting red you know these are things that are are comforting to many of us but are also extremely discomforting to many, 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 many people too. So I adore him in how he has handled his press conference tour per se up to now. Um, but I think that almost highlighting other things outside of the incredible work he's done for equal rights is it's it's time now mm -hmm. for that as well you know like we un i understand we you are more. human get what what else do you got you know like and it's great you know but I, i'm not saying it because i need more but i feel like the name we they will need, we do more. need more you know <laughs> i yeah, need that, more personality yeah. Yeah. i have a mm -hmm. special place in my heart just to start off uh, for for straight dudes who back in the day were rallying for gay men yes. um, and women too, but you know, from my experience, the gay men, because those are the ones that you uh, get made fun of for like, oh, you like gay, are you gay? Like, you know, and they're willing to take the barbs and the slings and arrows for for their, their gay friends. So I love that about him. Um, I do agree with you too, yeah. to an extent. The, the HRC is one of those places where that he, he's speaking to his audience right. there, a, a specific audience where he needs to kind of rile them up a little bit more, uh, you know, on the LGBT issues. All I can really think about is the evolution uh, from from Hillary Clinton was the first time or uh, yeah, when Hillary, Hillary Clinton was running well, or maybe Obama, I'll say Obama. So Obama was like one of the first people running that m made some inroads with with the gays. And it took him till his second administration, because his first administration, he would say, like, oh, I, I think it's between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. And then his second administration, he, he lit the White House up in a rainbow. Right. So I was like, OK, great, great. Then Hillary kind of started talking about it. We took a, a step back. And now in this new um, uh, presidential race, we see that this this topic is so... Um, front and center and to hear somebody like actually speaking so pro-gay, pro-LGBT plus, you know? So I think that evolution, it gives me a little bit of hope of where we are moving, even though we've taken a couple steps back, you know, we're moving back forth, but we're still moving in that forward direction. So I'm, I'm, it gives me some hope for the future. I mean, I agree, but also, you know, to be honest, I mean, our community has now been, what, beaten up as a political football for the last 40 years. Yeah. It's been as long as I've been alive. I mean, and Anita Bryant was 1970s. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. was born in, mm -hmm. I was yeah. born just around that time, not telling you when. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, ever since then, LGBTQ rights has basically seen as political football. One party ch started, champ uh, Democrats started champion, it, but Republicans had that set of, you know, that set of beating us. And but you do see the progress, though. Yeah. We see progress. No, I mean, for example, I just want to remind everyone at, uh, watching the show that Joe Biden is the first one to embrace gay marriage in the White mm -hmm. House yeah. before he convinced uh, Obama, Obama to do the yeah. same. I, so, I, uh, well, go ahead. Another, no, I, another, that's, I mean, that's, another, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> that is a whole other topic. I, I would love to go there. But I, I do want to go back to um, them showing Tim Walls as more than just speaking out against, mm -hmm. the, you know, gay rights. To your point, you know, uh, Trindadi, is that he was playing to his audience there. Mm -hmm. They have shown the other sides of him, right? They have talked about what he's done in schools with, um, um, mm -hmm. you know, food and stuff like that and helping people with food insecurity. They have talked about the economy in Minnesota. They've talked about it being a happy state. They've talked about also trying to appeal to the other side. They 
they and connected him to the NRA and the fact that he is a gun carrier member, right? So they have tried to like connect them to various audiences. I think that, you know, the the campaign knows that, you know, it's really critical in this election to uh, coalesce our community. They know that they need our support. They they absolutely Do you think it's pandering though. I don't think it's pandering. I think that they know that they need our support and that they are going to play to his assets. And that's what you do in political campaigns, right? You play to your base and you play to those who you need their support, right? And I think that mm -hmm. it's not, it's not, he's not being disingenuous. Mm -hmm. These are real, this is real, this is a man, as we talked about, he's showing compassion. Yeah. Like it'd be disingenuous if he was on the other side saying, you know, like, like Melania Trump hosting the log cabin Republicans so that Trump could appeal to gay conservatives. Like to me, that's bullshit, right? Uh -huh. Trump could care less about our community, but they pandered, right? They, I don't think the the left is pandering. Like they're just play, like they're playing up their assets. Their assets is that they support equal rights, right? They support the gay community, right? They support us for a long time. We are where we are because of the Democratic Party, right? For our community. So I think that they're just playing into their assets and, 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 and part of it's their base. And they know that the gay community is part of their base. November's around the corner. Well, maybe one little other observation. The vote. <laughs> so so what, yeah, yeah. one little other observation is that, you know, vice presidents really don't get much attention. I think he's getting a lot more attention because Kamala, um, you know, is not the most popular. You know, she probably would not have won a primary to be where she is. That's just my personal opinion. But when she needs to be a little bit more likable and to appeal to a different base, um, she's like, uh, Tim, uh, you got this one? Tim, 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 come over here. And I think he's a great guy for that. I, well, I, I feel I like think she people... needs them for the male vote and that male backing that everyone wants behind her. I, I, he is the nice uncle. personality. Well, he's the nice uncle, like I said. Me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, let's, let, let's, let, let's be real. I mean, like, I, I think she's an unknown, right? And I think all the polls are still saying that, you know, different audiences and different demographics that they still don't know a lot about her, though she was vice president. Mm. But we, I mean, that's all the polls, right? I mean, like, I mean, polls are snapshots of time. It is, you know, people who are answering questions. So people are saying, you know, based on all the polls that they're still trying to get to know her. And that's one of the things that when you hear political commentators about tonight's debate, right, is that what they talk about is the fact that she still has to reintroduce herself. And I mean, mm -hmm. part of that, I think, is kind of crappy because she did that during the DNC. But mm -hmm. that's what all the political commentators are saying based on the polls. I think that, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I think that she was, uh, she's still an unknown, I think, in a lot of households. She really they're is They're going to make her unknown. jump through hoops and hurdles because she's a woman. And I think, let's be real, she's a woman, she's black, black right? Woman. Like, let's be freaking real. If she was somebody else, would she have to go through this? Likely fucking not, you and, know? And also, I want to point out that in, a, in the American political system, the vice president is one of the most peculiar positions that you can get. For one thing, the only qualification is to be alive. Right. Because you are literally the president in waiting. You don't have a policy portfolio. You don't, you're, you're not, uh, you're not a, a member. I mean, you are a member of the cabinet, but you don't have a department to run. Constitutionally, exactly. constitutionally, you don't have any real authority. Exactly. Other than to fill in for the Actually, president, you know. Earlier in the presidency, early in the presidency, early in American history, the vice president is not there most of the time. No. They right. don't need to. Mm -hmm. All you need, to, he, they, the only job they need to do is to step up if the big guy died. Right. But, 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 but to your point, um, actually, I, I think that if we look historically at the presidency, it was Dick Cheney who allowed the vice presidency role to really have a lot of power, actually. He is the vice president who wields so much power. And after that, actually, and I, I, I think a lot of people are saying that the vice presidency doesn't get a lot of attention. At post Cheney, the vice president has actually gotten a lot of attention. I think that's a big misnomer, you know, because Cheney actually wielded all the power and Bush actually just followed him. And then after that, when we think about uh, vice president after Biden wielded a lot of power. Obama gave him a platform, mm -hmm. you know, and so vice presidents have emerged since Cheney with a lot of power, and 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 they 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 actually matter. Although people say that they don't matter, I think they matter significantly. To your point about Tim, you know, Kamala is sort of deploying him where she needs him, right? He matters then, right? He matters if she's deploying him where she needs him, right? He wouldn't matter if she if if, if he didn't matter, she wouldn't be deploying him, right? She would just be out there. Well, we so can't wait matter. for the debate tonight. Oh God! I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say I'm gonna put a bookend on. That's right. right Let's go. Here.